Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris, uh, and this is Oshin. Uh, we're on, working on Obel. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, DKG and cooperative staking. Um, but before we go on to the fun stuff, I want to give a bit of a background on uh, the current user flow for solo staking for an individual. Um, this is the uh, launch pad, or when we started working on it a couple years ago, uh, the E2 launch pad. Um, and you can go to it at uh, launchpad.ethereum.org. Um, so some of our design goals, um, the key user flow or the main user flow was education, key gen to generate your keys, and then deposit. Um, and like the primary goal that we had in our designing workshops was that nobody loses funds. This was like extremely important, even more so than like, we would, we would be fine having drop off, but like, making sure that nobody loses funds when depositing using this interface. Um, so we started off with like a whole list of advisories, um, you know, and like even as basic as like what is proof of stake, um, key gen management, uptime and slashing, um, and like the commitment because withdrawals were, in, uh, were not gonna be enabled until after the merge. Um, so um, the, also you walk the user through um, the execution client, formerly known as uh, ETH1, client, so Geth, Nethermind, et cetera, um, and uh, setting up their consensus client, formerly known as the E2 client. Um, hopefully you recognize those, Lighthouse, Teku, Present, and Nimbus. No love for Lowstar? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we, we can add that soon. Um, we can, anyone can submit a PR and we'll put it in there. So, um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, so you would, the, the trickiest part about the user flow is actually like just, you had to remove the user from the DAP and take them through uh, the terminal to generate their keys. Um, think about it like generating, key, or generating your seed phrase for MetaMask, um, and you have like a seed phrase that controls a bunch of accounts, and in this case, um, also accounts, but really validators. Um, so, it, uh, so yeah, you, would, you generate this, um, and you can see amazing, you see Leslie the Rhino here in the terminal, and um, this is effectively an HD wallet controlling multiple validators. Um, uh, yeah, and so um, also the output, so you'd get your mnemonic, um, and then you'd also get uh, this deposit file. Um, and this deposit file would include, um, uh, well, it would be one file for multiple validators and multiple rows, and it would include the pub key, which is the validator public key, um, the, the network name, so like think for ETH1 mainnet, um, ring could be Robston, but for ETH2, and uh, the deposit data root, which is like, used to verify the parameters, um, and then the signature, um, which is basically effectively the proof that you own the public key. And um, then you would connect your wallet and walk through um, your 32 ETH deposit per validator. So that is the current flow, and you can go to it again on launchpad.ethereum.org. And now for the fun part, Noshin will talk about um, validating as a group. Cheers, thank you. Um, hi guys, my name is Oshin. I am working on Obel Network, and today we're looking at distributed key generation for distributed validators. So briefly, before we get into the key generation part, what is a distributed validator? And the idea is, for those of you that are familiar with an existing validator, you have your private keys on one machine, and these computers die invariably, and you can't bring up a backup without risking getting slashed, um, so you're kind of stuck in no man's land until you can fix the server. Um, what we're building with distributed validator technology is an extra middleware client that sits between the validator and the beacon client, and it basically has f four or more nodes um, all signed stuff, and it recom recombines the signature and broadcasts it as a group. And the trick about it is you only need three of the four to be online to be able to stay up. So this is the first time you have high available fault tolerant validators. Um, and that's a very powerful technology. However, um, depending on how this is done, this could end up where you know, Coinbase just runs all four inside like four different availability zones of Amazon. That's not really what we want to get to. What we really want is we want four different companies or you know, four different friends all running a piece of the validator rather than one person having total control. And um, a very key part of this is how do you actually create these keys? Because if you have one person create them in a centralized manner and give them to everyone, it's kind of the weakest link in your entire chain. So this is where distributed key generation comes in. So distributed key generation is the idea that a group of people all create um, a piece of a key, and it never exists on one person's machine at any point in time. And this is something that's been around for quite a long time, but it hasn't been 
in, there hasn't been a lot of UX investment in it, I guess is what I'll say. Um, so there's lots of different challenges and we at Obel um, are doing um, quite a lot in it and we'll chat more about it at the Eats Taker thing tomorrow. But um, we have questions like, you know, do you host a centralized server to like enable this communication? Um, how do you know who is taking part? Are you making assumptions about you know, identity somewhere in the stack? Um, if you're not hosting a central server, do you know if your users can open up a web server of their own and can they set up you know, HTTPS on that web server safely? Not likely is what our user testing told us. Uh, and then other questions like, can you substitute a user into a group if you know, one person's not like, performing? So um, we won't get too much into the like, solutions we've been working on the last while, but we originally built um, an implementation where everyone runs their own web server. That was OK, but it ran into the problems of like, running like, servers. Then we tried to do it all in browser, but you run into problems of like, centralization, having to run you know, centralized servers because a web browser can't you know, mm -hmm. talk to other web browser without something in the middle. Um, and now we're like mixing and matching and like having half the key generation happen in the browser where you have your MetaMask and you can sign for identity. And you take that file to a, a CLI tool, not unlike the existing launchpad, and continue the DKG there. And that's kind of the, the best of both worlds in that it you know, allows us to make sure they have their network connected, but we can still rely on MetaMask or like Ethereum identities for, for key generation. That's it. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. So as far as the terminology, et cetera, is concerned, when you hear SSV and Share Secret Validator, et cetera, how does it differ? It's always similar. Yeah. Um, Share Secret Validators became a name of a project in the ERC-20 token and the like. So okay. the Ethereum Foundation effectively said, let's call it Distributed Validators. People mm -hmm. get the idea more. But okay. yes, it was originally called SSV, but okay, now good. it's Distributed Validator Technology is usually what it's called. Awesome. Thank you.